Hi, I'm Amy Barrett Daffin, the publisher here at CNT Publishing and your resident color expert. And I'm here to talk to you today about the Essential Color Card Deck. There are 200 cards in this deck and they are so much fun to play with. I can't wait to show you, so come on. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is there are some new cards in here or new new colors in here that we've never had in any of our other color tools. Now this color tool is based on Joan Wolfram's color tools and the Ives color wheel. But what's really exciting about this are the big chunks of color that you get to look at. So I'm going to show you how these works. So the first ones I want to show you are the grayscale. We've never done grayscale before. And what's so nice about this is you get to see big pieces of grayscale. And as Alex Anderson always says, color gets the credit, but value does the work. And this is your value scale. So I'm gonna flip over a card and show you what it looks like on the other side. Now this is white. Each of these cards has the same information on the back. And it shows you where in the grayscale this color falls. It also gives you the RGB if you're doing something on a monitor, CMYK if you're doing something for print, or the hex color code so that you can use this for various purposes. So that's what this is. So this is the value scale, which is something new for us in this product. What's really exciting are these browns. So we've talked a lot about neutrals and what this shows you is a neutral with color added. So this shows you brown with a red cast and then what the hues and tints look like here. So we add in white for a tint and uh, gray, up to black. So you can see what these look like here. So we're adding tints to these colors of brown and it changes them. And you know, brown is in so much of our home decor that it's really important to try to incorporate brown into your quilts sometimes. Not everybody. I may not be a big fan of brown, but I definitely see the value of it. So there's brown that has a red cast which makes it warm, brown which has a blue cast which makes it cool, and brown that has a yellow cast. And I look at this as being like a little acidy, but I like it. And I'll show you how I use them in color planning. So then the next thing I'm going to show you is one of the color sets. And each color has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. So one of the cards is the pure color, and in this case, it's yellow. On this card, it tells you it's yellow, it's color number one, and the hue means it's the pure color. So we give that a 1A so that it helps you organize. And I'll show you the others too, but first I wanna to talk to you about the color families. Now the color families are really cool because we show you, so monochromatic would be using one color. Complementary would be using the yellow plus the color right across from it, which happens to be number 13. And now what is number 13? I think number 13 is violet. So the complementary of one is 13, which is violet. Then you can go split complementary. So what you do is you take yellow and you pick two of the colors on either side and you get this beautiful, warm, uh, sort of, analogous color with a pop of violet or a pop of the color directly across. And I'll show you how we use that later. The next color plan is analogous, which is the colors, uh, three colors on either side of your main color. And then the next one is triadic, which shows you uh, the three colors that play nicely together. The nice thing about yellow is it always plays with magenta and uh, cyan or turquoise. We call it turquoise. Um, and then here's the opposite split complementary. So say that you have a color like yellow that you don't really like. You can use the split complementary and use the colors on either side of the complement to sort of quiet down the yellow. So yellow becomes the accent and not the focus. And I'll show you that as well. So these are the colors. And then when you flip them over, I'm going to put this one back in line with its 
color family. And you're going to see here, that's perfect. So you're going to see here, this is yellow. These two are yellow with white added. These two are yellow with gray added. And these two are yellow with black added. If you add white, it's called a tint. If you add gray, it's called a tone. If you add black, it's called a shade. So tints, pure tints, tones, shades. Okay, and then the best part about this color card deck is how big these cards are because what you get is a really juicy piece of information to pick your color families. So what I'm gonna talk to you about today is how to tell a color story. So I'm gonna pull out my whole deck. It's my favorite part. So this is the whole deck of 24 colors and it is just ever so lovely and ever so yummy. Now, why do I have this super, super busy fabric in front of me that you would look at and go, oh, I love those colors. And then you get it home and you're like, I don't know what to do with this fabric. I'm gonna show you what you can do. And this is a great thing to do. Say that you only have 20 minutes at home and you wanna take out some fabric and play with it, but you don't really have time to make anything. This is a great way to build your color confidence so that when you do get around to making a quilt using that fabric, you can do something really cool. Okay, so I'm looking here and I'm gonna say to start off with, I'm gonna start with number, I think this is 23. Yep, I'm getting there, 22, 23. Okay, so this is the pure hue of 23. And I definitely see that in there, but I also see some others. And I think what I wanna do is come up with something a little uh, different than just using the pure color. Pure color is my go-to and I don't wanna do that because I wanna break out of my color rut. So I'm gonna start with something that's quite a bit lighter, and then I'm gonna go with something quite a bit darker, and I may even put down that, because that's pretty darn close to this here. Okay, so I've started off with one color, which is my yellow orange. So I'm gonna look at the back of this card and I'm gonna say, okay, or orange yellow, I'm sorry. So 23 orange yellow. So the triadic of that is number 15 and number seven. Now I know these cards pretty well, so I have a pretty good idea of where number seven is, which was right here. And I'm gonna to go to number 15. Now I'm gonna show you a triadic color combination. So I'm starting off with, I know that these three colors are gonna make pleasing color every time because they're part of the triadic color family. But which ones do I wanna pick? So I'm gonna look here and I'm gonna look over here and I'm gonna go, oh, I see what I'm looking for. And again, I could go super vivid. I could go with something dark to sort of tone it down or I could go with something more low volume, like one of those. So I'm for now, nope, I'm gonna go with those two. Then I'm gonna set number 15 up there and now I need to pick number seven. And you can see right off the bat, this aqua green is perfect. So do I wanna go really vivid or do I wanna go light or do I wanna go with something dark? And once again, I'm gonna go with something dark and I'm gonna go with something lighter. So now, this is my triadic color combination and I'm actually going to pull that one out and put it back just to make it a little bit easier for you. Okay, so now I've got my colors and this is a pleasing harmonious color story right here. So what else could I add to that? Well, there are other things I could add. I could look at the browns in here and I could say, you know, I could definitely add some browns. And I'm thinking this is more of a warm, that's yellow. So here's the warm browns and I look right here and I go, oh, I like that one, that sort of rusty brown color. So I'm gonna add that brown and then I'm gonna add a little bit of black and white because I think it'll help the colors pop a little bit more. And I'm gonna go with a really light gray. So here you go. Here's my color story using the triadic color combination. So right here. Now, when you look at all of this, you're not gonna use the same amount of every color, right? You're gonna 
you're going to try to use more of some and less of others. So what I'm going to show you is how am I going to break that up? So I'm going to use a little bit of that, more of that, more of that, a little bit of that, and a little bit of gray as an accent. I'm actually going to pull that one out and make that a little bit smaller. So now, if you think of it as percentage of how much color you would use in this, that's one way to do it. And what this color does is it picks up this and it creates a lot of movement on the quilt when you're doing that, when you're cutting up your fabric. So now you have your colors, you put them in your bag and you go to the store and you shop your fabric. That's one thing you could do. Another thing you could do is go to your stash and shop your stash, which I always think is fun to do because if I use my stash, I can buy more stash. So this is the triadic color combination. So I wanted to show you that one. So then let's say we decide we are going to do a completely different color and I am going to go to that orange red, which is color number 20. Okay. So I'm going to take this orange red and I'll flip it over and right there, you see this hot, hot color, right? So I'm going to go with, I'm going to take this lighter one and this dark one. I'm going to set orange red over to the side with my other colors so I can put them back in order when I get there. And I'm going to flip it over and I am going to do split complementary. So now there's a little trick to this because I personally won't reuse a color when I'm playing with my color cards because I'm trying to teach myself to build my color confidence and break out of my color red. So number 20 is across from between six and 10. I already used seven, so seven's out. Can't play with seven anymore. Sorry, seven. But I can go anything between six and 10. And I know six and 10, are right around here. So let's stop at 10. There we go. And then here's six and six goes to right there. Nope, that's five. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so now I can take anything from these to build my split complementary color palette. And I really like, whoops, that one. Okay, so I'm gonna pick one of those. And I'm going to go dark. Okay, so there's one. And you just look at all these yummy colors and you just start looking around and you start finding what really works. And you could go with something super light. Yeah, I need to go really light because I keep going with the same value. And that is a recipe for disaster, people. Disaster, I say. So don't do that. Stick with going with lights and mediums. Uh, that's pretty close. And then I'm gonna go really dark. Okay, so I've got one, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna add one more in there. Do, do, do. What number didn't I add? I did an aqua. I'm gonna add turquoise for a pop. Okay, so there's my pure color. So now, this is my different color combination. And just like we added browns before, I'm gonna add browns again. So I've got all these yummy colors. And you can see how this against those, this is going to create the movement in your quilt. Now I'm going to add, this time I'm gonna add a brown with yellow to it because there's a lot of that in here and it creates a really different feel I think I'm going to go with that one. And I'm going to add black this time, or nearly black, one away from black. Okay, so here, I'm going to lay it out for you again. This is a split complementary color story. And remember what I said about, you know, how much color you want to use of each one, and you sort of look through and you des decide. And so this is a completely different color combination. So this is your split complementary, and I'm gonna show you the one that I did before. Just to show you how different, sorry, I have a hard time getting my hands to do what they want sometimes. Okay, same fabric, two completely different color stories, 
both work. So that's how you use the Essential Color Card Deck. And um, if you like this video, remember to hit subscribe and remember to ask any questions because they will send those questions to me and I'm happy to answer them for you. So thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.